Hello everybody. Considering how rural I am right now, I'm pretty surprised I've been able to go live, but here I am. I'm at the Poria farm. Yes, I'm in shorts. I'm down south of China where it's nice and warm. I can just get back in just a singlet and kind of like let my legs breathe. So hello, everyone's starting to come on. Awesome to see you. We're at the Poria farm. So I'm in Yanun province down south of China. Now I am surrounded by incredible wild pine forest got a beautiful sunset kicking up behind me here and this is a little micro farm where our poria is growing underneath these soil mounds here now poria if it was a popularity contest poria is not winning it in the west for some reason but here in the orient it absolutely is poria is a beautiful as you can see big underneath all this mud and dirt that it's been growing in you can see it's actually a white mushy and what we're going to do now is get this cleaned up and then we are going to deshell it get that outer layer and oh, get that outer layer off and then it's going to be exposed to a nice beautiful polysaccharide rich immune modulating medicinal mushroom that's one of the ingredients in our mason's mushrooms and but here in orient this is pretty much a part of every longevity tonic the saying goes out of 10 longevity blends pori is going to be in nine of them now i'll just give you a little like i'm going to try and pick this oh, it's heavy it's like i don't know it's like 15 20 kilos big and i've just dug it out of you can see just there yeah, let's go over let's do this so i've just dug it out of here so you can see just here is the pine hang on i'm just gonna get this down oh, just here is the pine dwanwood log that i was grow that we've been growing it off and so once again we're growing it on its natural food, which in this case is pine wood, pine trees. Very convenient when you're in a wild pine forest. Now, let's talk about why we are sourcing this poria. Hello, all of you coming on. Feel free to ask any questions. Let me get it somewhere a little bit easier for me to show you guys this big mushy. Uh, there we go. That's it. Underneath, that's a medicinal mushroom, guys. And so one of the reasons we're here in Yanun province, harvesting from a very small micro farm here in the wild is because when it comes to growing poria might be not be that popular yet in the west but it's very popular here in asia and what you've got to watch out for is deforestation you know if if what this wants to grow on is pine and wild pine is going to be the obvious choice to take get that into logs that's called growing duan wood when you grow on logs and then use that drill in there inoculate that with the mycelium of poria right and so then you get that underground cover that with soil and then the poria grows as you can see here all those mounds are these big big porias here if you do that at some point if it's not been regulated you're going to get deforestation now here in Yunnan province not only does it grow the most hot, like the most bad ass poria and there's been a lot of people looking at the energetics of it and looking at it, the actual nutritive compounds and the immunological compounds in there and have confirmed here this is where you get ddow the absolute best poria but here in Yunnan province, the government is so tightly regulating the amount of licenses given to people who are allowed to go and harvest wild pine trees and they license them because there's actually regulations on how you do it, how, much, how many you're allowed to take from a particular area and how many someone is allowed to actually go and harvest with a license. And apparently it's pretty, like, it's pretty gnarly in terms of how they regulate it, like they'll get choppers flying over seeing if there's anyone doing any clearing and as well they come and do um, routine checks up all around the area and they'll uh, and you have to be able to show which pine trees you've been um you've been harvesting and in what area you've been doing it and they go and check and so just wanted to give you a little spiel on like on that that's one of the reasons why we like harvesting from here not just the quality not just the fact that it's incredible but hey it's sustainable there's going to be bloody poria for future generations which is what we want so one of the supporting mushies i've had that in the um in the mason's mushrooms blend for its entire life 
And I put it in there because I kind of fell in love with it myself. I wanted Poria in my diet. I wanted Poria in a lot of other people's diets. And it's one of the best longevity herbs going round. And so I'm all about peop getting, getting these substances into people that can give them absolutely nice, long and healthy lives. But it's a cheat tonic. I've got a couple of them. Mushrooms generally cross over into being a cheat tonic. Um, however, it's a real specialist. And so um, what's the why? If you tell me um, beauty, um, beauty for what the why is um, in reference to. So when it, when it comes to a mushroom like this, being a chi tonic, what's that going to tone? It's going to tone the lungs, it's going to tone the spleens, the spleen, the spleens, unless you, I don't know, maybe you've got twin spleens inside of you. So that's all well and good. It's helping your lungs transform nutri um, oxygen and helping your spleen transform nutri um, nutrients. Um, why this more? Okay, I'm not sure what, why this mushroom. Oh, I'm explaining that now, why I chose this mushroom. Um, hello, Felicity. So why I chose this mushroom is one, because it was one of the original herbs laid down in Shen Nong's Materia Medica, that first Materia Medica that man got um, through humanity. <laughs> not like that we do have a living Materia Medica all around us, but that was 200 BC. And this was one of the primary superior herbs that he recommended. If you consume this for a long time, you have a nice, long, healthy life. Now, part of the reason is because it's toning spleen function. So you can actually transform foods and nutrients and get them transported into the body. Same with the lungs, but it's especially, especially amazing at helping your body regulate water, transform water. And so a lot of people running around very aware, it's pretty, you know, got pretty trendy there to get like a damp spleen. And so you've got inhibited spleen function therefore you're not able to digest properly and you've just got a lot of heaviness now it's highly related to chi and just basically a weakening of function in general but we're also looking at water um, being held within the body, within cells, um, edema, all these kinds of things where you have water retention and your body and your kidneys are lacking the ability to regulate water, how you release water from the body, how you regulate it, where it goes, and then also correlating to chi in terms of how you transform water chi and how your kidneys are actually transforming water chi in conjunction with the lungs and with the spleen this is what this is a specialist at, at getting the water within your body and helping as a chi tonic to mobilize that and move that around. So if you are on those, like those, you know, especially a lot of people in the post raw food, really cold food um, wave, um, they really got that like damp spleen label thrown at them by the TCM crew. And it's one of the core mushies that are actually helping to bring that movement and then bringing the ability of the body through the organs to warm itself up and get that digestive capacity rocking. So remember, this is one of the mushies I've got in Mason's mushrooms. That's why Mason's mushrooms is like correlated to being a really incredible um, gut tonic and gut nourisher within itself. And that's yes, because the mushies are um, prebiotics and because they activate lymph-based receptors within the gut. But it's also on a chi level because this herb is helping to move Move all that water and all that water chi that's stagnating the body in the first place. Now, may I go one? This is Poria, P-O-R-I-A. It's a big, it's a, it's a big white medicinal mushroom here. It's one of the supporting herbs in the Mason's mushrooms. Now, then you go a little bit further with it. Now, at the bottom of the heart, especially energetically, you're going to get an accumulation of water within an acupuncture point that's then going to start, like when that starts settling in there, it creates this constriction in through the chest. And I've really, I've, I felt this over the years come about here and there, and it's an energetic water chi accumulation and you get a tightening in at the bottom of the chest. Oh, I've got some little bug, oh, a little spider on my, on my, on my, um, little thumb there hang on you guys can see oh no he's gone sorry i was going to share the show the share the spider joy with you um and so you get that accumulation of water at the bottom of the heart there it's going to do a couple of things it's going to inhibit your um the fire that you have in your heart therefore your shen and your spirit aren't going to come out um as freely that then leads to anxiousness, um, leads to things, you know, as that starts to constrict in that chest area, it starts to also constrict the side ribs and that's then the home of the liver. And so then with that constriction, you start seeing 
anger and depression. And basically with that constriction, you start seeing an ascending chi or rebellious chi. And often because the water can't actually transform, you're going to get dry mouth, uh, dry tongue. You're going to you, like, despite the fact that you're heavy and you're wet, you're going to feel dehydrated. That's when you don't have the capacity to regulate and move your chi. Okay, so if you're taking Jing and Reishi, can you add Masons? And then how much is too many? Two or three is good. I don't, always when I share about things like this, I don't mean to like for you to go like, it's, it's when you're hearing about a new herb, it's like, oh my gosh, like I really, I really need that. And this isn't a herb that everyone like absolutely 100% needs, but it's just a useful one to have in your body. So if you are on Jing and Reishi, it depends on what your intention is, depends on what you're doing in your life and what you're working on. Jing and Reishi is absolutely one of my all-time favorites. You get Jing in the morning, that's toning those kidneys and adrenals, that's where we start and you get the grounding going. And you got Reishi generally at night, that's helping generally tone your whole body and your immune system, your nervous system, anxiousness, tone your Shen, bring your Shen out, which is magic. It's a wonderful one, two combo. Now, if you're going to add another one, maybe just add one more. Mason's mushrooms is an amazing one to add and you can do Jing and Mason's together in the morning and then you'll be able to get this little dose of poria. So I hope that answers your question. Hey, Shamanic Wands. How you going, guys? Any other messages I've missed out on? Um, no, cool. We press on. So then what becomes useful is having herbs that have their energy and their spirit present when grown in areas like this. Are you guys liking that? Winds blowing in the pine. It's bloody incredible. Um, oh, you're welcome, beautiful. Kayleen, beautiful Kayleen. So a chi tonic like poria as a mushroom is Oh, hang on one sec. So I just got, I'm going to keep on jumping on the questions. Um, do you take a break from them or just keep them up um, in a loop every day? If, if you're going long, if you're in a treatment protocol, you keep up to, you keep to them every day. If you are simply on a longevity preventative lifestyle, <clears throat> you can, you can circulate. Um, when I'm traveling, Mason's mushrooms is one of the easiest for me to um, be taking as well as Jing. I just take them and I smash them every day. You can take them every day. You will generally feel just like with certain foods. Sometimes you want to have a break from them. Sometimes like you might not feel like cucumbers and it's and you might not feel like olives you know you just you just get it and it's just like that that um that sense that you get with herbalism and tonic herbalism as well that you'll just organically circulate so when you get that accumulation of of water chi at the bottom of the heart there and it starts to um pacify your shen and your spirit dampen the heart and it starts to send rebellious chi and you know you start getting that uh, irregular coughing and that kind of thing this is when it becomes a you know this is when it becomes like symptom based when it gets a little bit heavy this herb, poria, is one of the most amazing for going and transforming that water chi. And then at that point, you start transforming that water chi and you start toning through kidney channels and through other channels within your body, your body's ability to regulate the water, how you transform water chi into other aspects of chi so you can get the five elements moving through your body and so you can actually start regulating your emotions. Because that's the other thing, when the chi's just moving up, through the liver, through the heart, because it's stuck and you're damp and you're damp at the bottom of your heart and you're damp and your spleen and your digestion isn't working and you pacified your, um, your spirit and you can get like a little, like that little bit of anxiousness. Generally, then you start out like you, you basically inhibiting your ability to regulate your emotions. And so this is why I'm really in love with this herb, not only because it's a longevity herb, but it helps regulate the movement of chi and the water specifically. Now in the West, it's classified as a diuretic, but it's so much more than a diuretic. It's a tonic herb and it is an adaptogen. And so it is toning your kidneys abilities and your whole kidney meridian lines ability to regulate waters where they go, how to transform fluids in the body and now know where to hold an appropriate amount of water and when to release an appropriate amount of water and so that's why i like it. and that's why it's a longevity tonic because regulating one of the key elements within the body is one of the core things to longevity in general okay i love your videos oh cool so informative so so excited to get your first order awesome boon gazer let me know what you got and uh how you're going on that whole herbal journey so for those of you journey, um, just joining i'm at the poria farm in yanun province in the south of china i've just dug up this poria from there it is grown on wild pine and it is bloody wonderful. Now, to get it as a chi and immunity tonic mostly, what'll happen, we wash that as I said before, then we'll take off this outer shell. See? 
Take off that outer shell there. You got like left with white mushroom, fruiting body of the mushroom on the inside. That's the chi and immunological herb, right? Now that is also, of course, toning a little bit of our shen. And so as we get rid of that moisture at the bottom of the heart, and we start moving the dampness and the edema and all those kinds of things, the vitality comes back. It does come in through that action, doesn't work on the heart directly. It's more working on lungs, spleen, kidneys, but it does allow the, the um, heart fire to come back energetically, um, chi-based and, and physiologically within the function. And then at that point, you start getting more shen coming through. So it is a shen tonic. It's a spirit tonic. It's a, it's a calming tonic. It's unifying the mind and the heart and the body. And so you can just basically become a more badass human and less of an asshole. That's how I see shen coming through. Now, that's why it's known as a shen tonic, but at the same time, it's also known as a herb that um, pacifies the hun, your ethereal bodies. And so basically, I'm not going to go too deep into that, but it's heavily a unifier. Now, I use poria fruiting body, right? So the whole fruiting body, body of the mushroom. Now, in future, I will be using what's called shen poria. Shen poria is when you can see I'm growing on pine here. Now, just on, as that mushroom starts growing out of the pine, when you harvest right from there, you harvest only the center of the poria and just that little 20% of the mushroom mycelium and that part of the pine that's been transformed by the mushroom as it grows out. And so about 20% you'll harvest deep in there. Now you can get access to that if this poria is growing in the wild. It's not like growing on grain where we need to brush away the grain. This is grown on wood. You can't get access to the deep mycelium on the inside, just that bit that's showing itself to you and making it itself available to us. Now, Shen poria, we harvest about, we harvest that bit. So but the end product is 80% just the center deep center of the poria and that that bit that's grown out of the pine now that is full-blown shen spirit uh get the anxiety gone bring through your spiritual potentials bring through your wisdom your presence and that can seem a little bit wishy-washy but when you look at what can happen physiologically when you get the body and the mind unified through um through the vagus nerve you start bringing immunological factors forth that take care of viruses the body calms down on a whole nervous system level Obviously, you're going to be calmer, you're going to be more present, you're going to be more observant, and you're going to be less of an asshole, and you're going to be more of a beautiful person that's a contribution to the planet and your family. You're going to be able to like be, spend more time in contemplation rather than reacting. When a herb does that magically, it's known as a shen tonic, and that's shen poria. I'm going to be bringing that forth to you guys in the future as well. Uh, little beach farm, give it to me. Awesome. Yeah, it's in the Mason's Mushrooms, that one. That's one of the herbs in the Mason's Mushrooms. I'm just making sure there's no any questions. Cool. So, basically... I just wanted to come at you. Um, I'm finally back in shorts and a singlet after being in the north of China. And so I'm going to take my pour out. <laughs> it's a heavy bugger. And I'm going to get my ass back to the crew. And then we're going to drive another five hours to get to our hotel. Because tomorrow, starting tomorrow, I've got two days of going into the shrub and going and looking for all manner of wild Taoist tonic herbs, including black reishi and a bunch of other incredible herbs. So if, if I can, I'll, um, I'll go live. But if you guys don't have any other questions, here it is. Here I am. D Dow. Can't, can't get organic certification here because these are small farmers. Mr. Tsung is the name of the farmer. He's been doing it for 20 years, farming um, poria for 20 years. And there's no big business buying group that's handing out the, the big bucks to get organic certification so that then they can sell more because they've got a little sticker and they can bypass doing real deep work and going and making sure that they're investigating themselves how the herbs have been grown or putting in like an incredible amount of effort to do so. And so... If you go organic, you need to go larger scale and you need to go less rural. You can't have this wild stuff going on. And then you need uh, like a 
you need like a pimp business if you're a small farmer like like Mr. Tsung to be handing out the cash because it's like too too much for these guys to be able to afford it. So I'm going to keep on supporting those guys and I'm going to keep on sourcing my herbs DDAO. If it happens to if I happen to be able to make it organic as we go along, I will, but if not, I don't care. I'm going to just come and check out these places myself. As you can see, as always, it is wild. There's weeds growing everywhere. It's absolute magic and so are you guys and so are these mushies so that one's in mason's mushrooms check it out happy mushroom day for yesterday everybody um feel free to dm Superfeast with any questions i'm still on there despite traveling through china responding to everything and i love you guys catch you next time